Welcome everyone, uh, this is our first, uh, another first for us, our first kind of um, Bible study video. Um, I thought, uh, as well as doing sermon videos, since we've got gospel communities and um, things, I want to give you the opportunity to um, dig around in some other passages as well. Uh, and the way we're going to do that, uh, at least in this video, just for a trial is, um, rather than watching me explain it, we're going to look at the text in front of us. I'm just going to talk you through the passage and um, talk you through some uh, things that I uh, do in order to um, prepare uh, prepare sermons and Bible studies. Um, it's important to know, isn't it, that um, when we become Christians, uh, the Holy Spirit fills our hearts, and He dwells within us, and He gives us a great ability to understand the Bible. But He doesn't magically make us able to read it clearly all the time uh, what, what I mean is you know skills for digging around in scripture and reading the Bible you know they're not magically imported into our brains when we become Christians we need to learn how to read the Bible well how to study the Bible how to analyze it how to understand what the person who wrote the Bible was meant to say and what he didn't mean to say uh, and so hopefully this video as well as um, give you some of the great truths of Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 14 I also want to model to you how to read the Bible kind of a bit more interactively uh, and study it maybe in a way you haven't done before and um, so yeah hopefully this will be useful um, I'm open to feedback if it's useful or not or if there's improvements to be made then um, let me know send me an email or whatsapp or something um, and we can um, uh, uh, we can improve uh, and if, 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 if you find it useful we can do more of them um, so yeah, uh, since we did Titus uh, last Sunday, um, we're just going to look at a little bit of Titus, these four verses, Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14, um, and we're just going to um, read through them, break them up into little phrases and little sections, uh, and then just have a look at what's there. So let me read through them first. Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14 for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good Heavenly Father, uh, as we turn our attention to this passage, please help us, uh, help us to understand your word. Thank you that you've given us words that we can read and, and think about, um, that we can analyse and um, consider and meditate upon. Please help us uh, do that well, with the result being not just that we know more of your Bible, but that we know more of you, uh, and that we are more obedient to you, and that we are more like your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So um, the first thing I do on, when I'm writing a sermon or a Bible study, uh, the first thing I do is I um, get a passage and I kind of break it up into pieces. Uh, uh, you can see I'm using a, a kind of uh, a special uh, app. It's called BibleArc.com um, to do this. You can do this uh, if you want to have a go. You can do it pen and paper, old fashioned. You can do it um, in any word processor. You can copy the text from the internet or something and just paste it in and move it around. Or you can... Um, uh, you can go to BibleArc.com and have a play around with that. Um, so let me just break this passage down into little bits for us. So, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good so hopefully you can see as I read through that uh, just uh, uh, places where it's obvious that there's a kind of new sentence or a new thought that's going on we just put that on a new line and it just helps us to kind of break it up into smaller sections Sometimes you find in the Bible that sentences are quite long and complicated, aren't they? And so breaking it up like this just helps us take it apart and see what's really there. And then once we've broken it up, the next thing we do is just think about how each of these little bits relate to each other, how each of these lines relate to each other. So, for example, 
at the start for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people can you see the phrase that, that offers salvation to all people is telling us more about this grace the grace of God has appeared what grace is the grace that offers salvation to all people and then we've got a new sentence it teaches us and again can you see it, it teaches us two things both of those lines there tell us what it teaches us it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and so negatively to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and positively to live self-controlled upright godly lives so there's two things that it's teaching us uh, and then the next line KC tells us we're to do that when when are we to live these lives while we wait for the blessed hope I'm gonna move that down uh, KC the next line what is this blessed hope it is the appearing of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ because all we're doing is just breaking things down and thinking how do they relate to each other uh, and then these next few lines you see they also tell us more about who this Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ who gave himself and then we're told two reasons that he gave himself he gave himself to purify us from all wickedness sorry to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good and so can you see hopefully in just a few minutes w without doing anything particularly strenuous or technical or confusing we've kind of built up a a map if you like of the passage rather than just looking at a paragraph on a page now we've got something with a bit of structure we can see what's going on we can see how the little sentences and the clauses relate to each other and once we've done that then we can start analyzing it and thinking about what's actually here and so let me draw your attention to a few things that are in this passage i'm going to highlight them just so you can see them clearly the first thing i want to draw your attention to is that this passage talks about two appearings doesn't it can you see that the grace of God has appeared it's already happened um, but it also talks about the appearing of our uh, of our of Jesus Christ the first appearing uh, is what we call Christmas isn't it the incarnation Jesus becomes man born of a virgin uh, so he can live on the planet uh, the second appearing is one that's yet to come the, the, the future appearing it's it's our future hope Jesus Christ will come again one day uh, and so because of this can you see another thing that uh, I want to draw your attention to a highlight uh, in this time uh, is that um, there's a future aspect because we're waiting for this um, second appearing then there's lots of things that um, uh, that point us to the future uh, there's talk of waiting uh, there's talk of uh, this present age because you know what we're looking forward to is, is the not the present age but the future age uh, and there's this talk of hope which is something we look forward to so can you see just by splitting this off and, and reading through it carefully we're starting to pick up some of the things that we might have missed if we just read it really quickly in our Bibles uh, let me draw your attention to something else and highlight this in orange let me um, talk to you about the way that Jesus Christ is referred to um, he's referred to as the grace of God and he's referred to as the glory of our great God uh, so the first appearing which obviously is that is Christmas the incarnation it doesn't say for Jesus appeared but it talks about the grace of God appearing uh, that's just a, a, a new and wonderful way to think about Jesus isn't he he is the embodiment of the grace of God and similarly to that he is the embodiment of the glory of God 
and more than that in addition to Jesus being the grace of God and the glory of God uh, just a phrase here um, talks about the glory of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ uh, this verse here uh, these verse these words here let's see if I can just um, highlight them for you or what I'll do is I'll um, underline them if that's clear enough um okay see this is verses where we see that jesus is referred to as god the appearing of our great god and savior jesus christ this is a verse that talks about the divinity of jesus jesus isn't just uh, a really important person he is god himself when jesus appears god appears they are one and the same this is part of the bible's teaching on the trinity father son and spirit and here we have um, god and jesus referred to in the same place the same person uh, so this passage is, is really helpful uh, uh, for helping us think about jesus uh, and who he is he's the grace of god he's the glory of god he is god himself he is divine uh, and um, uh, one more thing to draw your attention to just before we wrap this video up and um, we'll go uh, highlight in purple why has jesus come and what is he what are we to be doing well um just know kind of almost everything else that isn't already highlighted is all about purity isn't it uh, to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions to live a self-controlled upright and godly life um to be redeemed from all wickedness to be pure for jesus uh, eager to do what is good can you see there's an awful lot going on in this passage which is about how we are to live in this present age how do we live in this present age how do we wait well for jesus how do we look forward to the glory of god appearing well we live lives that shun ungodliness and pursue godliness why did Jesus give himself to redeem us that is to rescue us to free us from wickedness and to make us pure so just as we finish uh, let me encourage you one study the Bible read the Bible it's 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 a wonderful thing to not just read the Bible kind of chunk by chunk chapter by chapter but to take a few verses and dissect them and think carefully about what is going on so that's the first thing just go away uh, ha have a think through uh, see what other things you can spot that i have want i haven't already mentioned in this in these verses there are plenty of things i haven't mentioned so um go away and see what else you can see study the bible but secondly while we wait for the blessed hope the appearing of our the glory of our great god and savior jesus christ while we wait for him let us pursue holiness and purity let us do everything we can to shun and spurn worldly passions and wickedness let us be eager to do what is good